Hey, good morning. Good morning to you. I don't think those are the correct words, but good morning. Hello. There's my teddy bear saying hi to you, and I got Benji under my feet. It's a, it's a rainy morning, so they're all kind of sleepy and doe-eyed and everything, not nearly as excited as they normally are, which is a good thing for us because then they don't bark a whole lot. Right, Teddy? Yes, right. He says right. Um, so it's the two of container week. Sounds kind of boring, doesn't it? It's sort of like when you, it's infrastructure week in Congress. And it's like, what? What does that mean? Um, so container week is just days. Um, yes, they are. They are definitely great craft days. It is rainy. Um, and, uh, and so we're going to craft away. Hello, Leslie. Hi, Ardeen. Hi, Loretta. It is. It's a necessary week because if you're like me or even, you know, a little tiny bit like me where you like to give away gifts or when you have somebody new in the neighborhood or at Christmas, you want to sort of tip somebody with uh, cookies and a little gift card. This is a great week for all those little projects. And today we're going to be doing a little box um, that's great for like little treats. So if you're the kind of person that likes like chocolate covered pretzels or you make the best like Buckeye balls or rum balls. I have friends that, you know, that's their thing. When I was a kid growing up, my mother was, uh, I think I've told you this before, but my mother loved to make her Mamie Eisenhower million dollar fudge. Um, it actually was from um, Mrs. Eisenhower, the, the wife of President Dwight D. Um, and she was a cook. She liked to cook and she shared her her fudge recipe, which was very, very rich. And it's uh, it was captured in a I think it was like a Joy of Cooking or Betty Crocker kind of thing. And my mother used that when we were growing up to um, to make the fudge. And one of the things I noticed that she never, she never bought boxes. She would just kind of wrap them in heavy duty uh, aluminum foil. And then she'd put like a tag on them. But I want to do something a little bit better. And that's this box. So if you're kind of like me, and you want to put a little bit of, you know, bling bling on your gift, here is an awesome opportunity to do so. So here is my version of this box in this small size, but I also made it in a medium and we have a large size as well. Now I will tell you that this file is available in the Cricut community. However, if you are going to make it yourself, um, I'm not sure if there's one item, possibly this Joy, because I purchased it, even though it has an A on it. Um, it doesn't show up as Cricut Access Friendly, but I believe that it is when you look at this. It's, I have this named as Joy Gift Box in three sizes, okay? So where did this come from? This came from, actually came from Cricut... Um, Cricket, what do you call it? Community, whatever. So if I were to go over here and go home and I were to look for, uh, let's see, up here, I were to type in joy, gifts, boy, not boy, joy, gift box. I should come up with the original project. Um, and you can see here, there are some people that who have also done this box, but this is the original box, joy, gift box it's got i got it bookmarked and i haven't changed much about this except making it in different sizes so you can either find it in like this community thing or you can find it on my profile okay so let's go back to the canvas and i'm going to show you a couple little tricks nope this is not the right one let's go to my stuff and you'll see here i've got two actually i've got this joy gift box in small and then I have this 
the gift box in three sizes. And I also wanna show you, if you didn't wanna have the little peaky hole in the front, you can remove that if you'd like. Now, when I make these boxes, I usually make them for something heavy like fudge, right? Or like something that's like a candy. Um, cookies are light, but fudge are heavy. So what I have tried to do with these boxes is, um, okay, let's save this. And um, I've done the bottom. So here, let's move these aside. So this is the big one. We'll ungroup it. And it really consists of one piece for the bottom. So I wanted to make it real sturdy. So this piece I'm gonna cut out in craft board. And you might think, what is craft board? Um, craft board is a product. I'm not sure if other people besides Cricut, they must, but other people besides Cricut, Cricut makes it. I'm going to um, just show you, this is what it comes in for Cricut. It comes in black. It comes in white and it also comes in craft, like that brown craft paper. It is a very sturdy paper. It's a, it's really like a poster board, but poster boards tend to be shiny. This is not, it's very, um, you know, like not shiny. What's the opposite of not shiny, dull? It, I don't know. It's just, I'm having trouble with my words today. Okay, so this is going to be the bottom. And the reason why I show you in the black is because I decided that I was going to make this without the joy on the top. Matt, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jamie. Matt, Matt. Um, and uh, so, so this one, I must have glued it. It's stuck. Uh, okay. So this one, I thought, you know, I've got a brand new neighbor that lives down the lane. And I thought that I would just make them a cute, like kind of welcome to the neighborhood sort of a gift. And here it is. Um, this box, which basically all I did was take out the window and took off these decorations. And I used the black for the bottom. And then I also used this farmhouse kitchen in this sheet color. I don't know if they tell you which one it is. Kitchen Chaos. I thought that was kind of cute. So I used that for the um, empty, the, the, the not peekaboo hole. So it looks like this. But I want to show you both ways. So I've cut out, well... I cut out two different sizes and I'm gonna show you how to, to put it together. But before we go to put it together, I just wanna comment a little bit more on, um, and put a little bit more on this project. So if you wanted to make this project um, bigger or smaller, or whatever, what you have to do is just take all the individual pieces. So this is for my acetate and it's just, it's a pretty small, uh, project, right? It's not really that big. And you can just go ahead, align center if you want. And then you'll see here, this is set for just over 10 inches wide. Um, and that makes a bigger box that we're going to make in a little bit. And this is the medium size, I think this medium, and this is the medium without that circle. So how did I get it to be without that circle? Pretty easy. So let's take this. We're gonna move these on out of the way. All right, so this is our basic box. Let's ungroup it. And um, I'm not gonna need these little doohickeys here, right? The uh, joy and whatever. And let's say I wanna change out the little circle on the inside. Very easy to do this. Maybe you wanna put a heart or you wanna put a, a mitten or a snowflake or something or none at all, which is what I did for my neighbors, right? So for none at all, I won't be needing this, which is the acetate, okay? Just so that you know. And then what I have to do is I have to detach it and detach is over here. And the detach is basically taking these, see these score lines? And it's just taking it away from that. So just move those over, preserve their integrity there. And then now you have just a product, a, a layer that can be contoured. So you're gonna go down to the bottom to the contour, which is like a dotted circle, okay? And then you can just go ahead and take that that circle out just like that 
Once you've taken the circle out, you can then add back these uh, detached cut lines or what are score lines, basically. Because yeah, this was started off as a, as a Cricut project, right? So then once you have them set up the way you want to, this is not quite set up the way I want it to be. I want this to be this here. I want to get it as close to that um, that tab edge there. And this is double, I think, so that the score is double, maybe. I, I didn't do that. So, okay, so here we go. I wonder if I did a line center, if it would do that. Yeah, it kind of did. All right, so then we, we take this and then we would attach these back. Okay, so now we have no, nothing in there. But let's go back and, you know, you can use your back button all the time, all the way back to where you started. So that way, if you don't, if you do something just for demonstration, there you go, all right? So there you go. Now, the only other thing to talk to you about, about the one with the hole is the acetate. We talked about acetate yesterday. So acetate is plastic. That's, um, let me see if I, did I keep my acetate? It's a plastic um, sheeting almost. I don't know what else to call it. A plastic, like a piece of plastic. And when we were doing the acetate yesterday, I was reminding everybody to please um, take off that extra piece. And then it also does attract quite a bit of junk. So um, this one here attracted quite a bit of junk. And also I did use... I use the acetate setting, but um, I, I, I use the acetate setting, but I also did use, look at that, I used some um, masking tape. So it does, it does get kind of dirty, which is why the film is there. So when you go, before you go to put it in there, make sure you give it a wipe off because it just attracts all that little paper lint and stuff like that. So there you go. So we're going to put together this in two different sizes. So we've got the large size and the small size. Let's do the large one first. So the large one I did in white craft board. And yes, there is a craft board setting. Okay, so do look for that. Now I did not use my, um, my uh, scoring wheel for this. I decided to use my stylus so you can not see too much. Um, obviously the scoring wheel works better than the stylus but still even though you're using if you're using the wheel or the stylus you still have to do a lot of this folding by hand. So what you're going to do is fold here and this is very thick so I would suggest fold it front and back like that to give it a little bit of I don't know, wiggle, 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 wiggle. All right, and you're gonna do it right on those lines that were created. And then while we're here, we're gonna do that same thing to the tabs. Right. And then do a turn, quarter turn, and do the same thing. All right the tabs this one I already did and then another quarter turn and do the tabs and the side so that all four sides are done and they're nice and flexible so this is going to really hold those heavy you know like truffles or fudge pieces or whatever it all else so what we're going to do now is we're gonna put the bottom together. This is a super easy, easy project. So, um, so you can, if you wanted to, let's say you are baking for Christmas or whatever, um, you can make these ahead of time. I would suggest maybe just cutting it out ahead of time, but um, because, or you'll have to find a place to stack them all that what you made. All right, so now what we're gonna do is take some uh, glue. I would not probably use double stick tape on this because it doesn't stick as well as some other some of our glue brands but can be a little bit messier 
So I'm using that reptile glue that was suggested by Eileen. Um, I think it's a really good heavy duty glue. I mean, it actually glues glass and PVC cardboard, ceramic, wood, and plastic. So I feel good about using this. Now I'm making sure that I'm working on the on the flat surface because I really want this to be squared up. You see, I really want it to be squared up. I don't know if you can see that. And now this side, just gonna put a couple of dollops of this glue here and spread around my finger. Or you could use something else, a Q-tip, if you don't like the feel of glue on your fingers. And square it up. Make sure you put it on a flat surface so that it's gonna be nice and square. All right, give it a second to grab. Now there are these things which I said to myself, oh, gotta grab those today. There are these things called quilt clips or they're fabric clips. So if you're a quilter or a sewer, you might have them, but they're like little tiny, like almost like clothes pins that you can put on here to hold these in place. Um, and I would recommend them if you are short on time, you know, because it will hold in place until the glue sets. But not necessary. It's just kind of a nice little extra thing so you don't have to keep minding those um, corners. Okay. And then, so I'm doing this all on a flat surface. I know there is a desire at least for me, because of my eyesight, I think, but like to pick it up and hold it like this. But if you're doing it on a flat surface, it makes it so much easier to get the lid on because the lid is just ever so slightly bigger than the bottom. And so you do need to uh, have it be pretty exact with a box. I love making boxes. Actually, this is what, like when I was a kid, that was what really got me into paper crafting was origami boxes when I was a kid. And I just love making these little paper boxes. And then I would put like my paper clips and stuff in there, uh, stacked and all that stuff. So, all right. So again, let's wait for this to get all nice and dry, but you can see it's very squared off through the whole thing. And look at how nice and heavy it is. <laughs> is one of the size boxes in your set of three in design space? Um, I'm not sure if I understand. Wonder Clips. Okay. So is one, is this one of the size? Yes. This is the large size out of the three. Um, and this is the large, this is the small, quite small, and this is the medium. So see, I could actually put the, put them inside of each other if I wanted to. So this is the large one we're doing the first anyway. And then here is the cover and here is the piece of acetate. So let's go ahead and I'm going to, I could use this or this side. This paper is from, where is this paper from? I believe it's a Christmas Town. Yep, here it is. Christmas Town. It's by Doodlebug. And this one is called Snow Much Fun. And I just I think I want to use the striped. I think that would look cute. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this this way. Again, same as with the box. But it's a less you know, it's not as thick as the craft board, which makes it a little easier. So first I'm gonna do those, oops, did I mess up? Yes, I did. Gooba gooba goober. Oh, my sister got a kick out of the fact that, um, that you guys know that I call myself a goober and that she got those goobers for me for the movie. <laughs> okay, all right, so I'm not going to do the, the tabs just yet because I'm just going to show you 
how you do the um, acetate. I'm a little dragging myself. My dog, I got one dog with his, his face on my foot. You know, he's like resting on my foot. Um, so again, this stuff, it you know, I left it out and I, I should clean it off if I, if I can see where I could find something to clean it off with, but I don't want to disturb my dog who's sleeping on my foot. Um, okay, so here's my acetate. I'm gonna get my double stick tape. You can't really see the acetate on this, but I'm gonna put it on onto the one side of the squared piece of acetate. Do you see that? Like that and very similar to yesterday um, when we made the cookie bags, okay? And then I do need a weeding tool to pick up that double-sided tape. It's a quiet day today. Here, which is good because then I can start working on the bigger project for this week, which is a um, is a snowflake cookie box. Okay, so there's the right side. There's the wrong side. I'm going to take my square, make sure it's within the square there, and I'm just going to press it down just like that. Now you can turn this over and you can see there is our beautiful window. So if you ever wondered how they did that, this is how I do it, so I don't know. It's probably very similar. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and glue the sides of this up. And put a little bit of dab of, little dab will do ya. Brill cream, a little dab will do ya. Bill cream. Just a dabble do. Anybody remember that? You know, I really love Christmas Christmas commercials, like old timey Christmas commercials. And I'll never forget, you know, there was always this one that I was like, oh, it's so cool. It was the Norelco shaver with Santa Claus inside the cup of the Norelco shaver. And he's coming down the, the hill in the shaver. Anybody else remember that? They used to play it all the time whenever they did the Rudolph. It was kind of like stop motion. And it was really, do you remember? Um, very cute. And I think they might still use it. It's so, it's so, what do they call it? retro modern mid mid-century modern i think it's very mid-century modern but you know if you're ever like in the mood for old timey sort of and i'm talking like you know 70s 80s and stuff you can go on youtube and you can just search for christmas christmas commercials from the 70s and they there are people that actually accumulate them all and I just watch them it's so much fun because you got the Folgers commercials remember those you know best part of waking up and they have always have the kid coming home from I don't know military service or from school or something and he comes in he start makes the coffee I like that one and uh trying to remember all of them and they're just fun and then of course the toy commercials and stuff but I just always like the um the adult ones where they're trying to get adults to be like interested in Christmas so they feel like yeah we'll make a Folgers commercial Folgers are great yeah all right so there is our cover I'm kind of taking my chances with putting it on because I don't think the glue is all completely uh, done. All right, let's look at the embellishment on the front. 
so there's our box and yes you could either choose not to embellish it what if you um wanted to give out like you work in an office you want to give out like ha uh, halloween candy you could switch this up with black and maybe a bit of patterned halloween thing you don't need to add the embellishment and you can put it in there and it just be a really cute gift so again these are the different sizes that i made this is small this is medium and there is the large so let's work on the larges embellishment which is over here so i have the word joy that i'm going to put on here and then i have this adorable holly so um, I'm going to use my regular glue for these because this doesn't have a pointy tip. Let's put this tip back on. And I'm going to get my glue and just kind of dot here. Now, you've got to be careful with when you're working around the acetate with glue because it doesn't because acetate doesn't have like really a lot of a porous surface. So the glue just sort of uh, like slips and slides all over and it makes a mess. So what I would suggest instead is instead of glue for putting this on the box using a double-sided adhesive um, pop dot. Double-sided adhesive foam dot. Double-sided adhesive, yeah, there you go. Double-sided adhesive foam dot. Okay, so that's really cute. And then this piece just needs this to go on here. But I'm gonna do something special on my little uh, holly berries. I'm gonna get out the glossy accents. So put this here. I suppose I could also put like something here and here, but I instead would rather use my glossy accents. So this is similar to, I think, think Nouveau Drops. I've never used Nouveau Drops, but someone told me they are. But basically what it is, is it's just kind of like, almost like a paint. It's clear and it dries clear and glossy. And it does level itself out. So when you put it on, you can kind of put it on and just sort of use the tip of it to, to sort of move it around. But it does take a little while for it to dry. So be careful because if you touch it, it will it will affect the glossy part of the accent. So let me show you the one I already did, which I did touch. <laughs> but see how it's nice and glossy? So cute, right? Yeah, it's a cute little way instead of having to, you know, I could also use glitter paper or maybe a glossy vinyl if I wanted to, but I decided that I would use my little glossy accents. So here we go. Oh, use the stickles. Stickles is, if you haven't seen the stickles, there's, it's like a glitter glue. Um, there's a lot of little different embellishment things you can do. So um, look around and don't go hog wild over one or the other because sometimes you get, you kind of fall in love with one and then you like find out, oh, there's these. So I had for the longest time, like all of the colors of stickles and, and I was just like, yeah, I don't need all these colors. So I ended up giving them away. Um, it's the same with ink, ink pads, markers, whatever. So um, let's see, so. This is still wet, but how am I going to do that? Maybe here. Joy. And then I will pop dot the other side of this and stick it on there. But there you go. Or you could have done it here or here. But I like that it's got the pink, and but it's still got the red and the green in there. All right. And then the small one we'll do real quick. A little more traditional coloring so again I use the craft board for this so we'll fold this it's just a really nice sturdy box without having too many layers so this is great for let's say you're part of a church 
church youth group or whatever, and you want to give everybody a little treat, maybe the teenagers or whatever, this is cuter than like maybe a candy bag. So I just think it's kind of cute. And, you know, I suppose it could be used for something other than food. I don't know, but I always thought the little windows in there was for, for food. Okay, back to here. I do too. I like that. Oh, I'm glad you like this box. There are other boxes. It, and this did come from Design Space, so that's kind of cool. And I hope you can easily find them. Whoops, my little. See, I, oop, I don't, now I have to wait for that to, to go. All right, well, let's see. Tomorrow, I'm still trying to decide if I want to do the, the box tomorrow. Let me tell you a little bit of what, what's going on with my life. Um, so I went to the oncologist yesterday. I had visited my general practitioner last week. And I think I told you that she took me off and took me off my high blood pressure medication and put me on iron pills, which they're very strong iron pills. You have to be very careful when you take them because they cause very upset stomach. I'm kind of feeling a little blah today too. So might be that, although I did eat breakfast, so who knows. Anyway, the oncologist said that um, she'd rather give me a transfusion because it's quicker and I'll get my energy back quicker. So that's why you see this red on here. So within the next 72 hours, they're matching and I don't know, doing something where they really match up your blood type with uh, you and somebody else's blood. I don't know how it works. And it's kind of gross thinking about it, so I don't want to think about it. But um, I thought it would be some, like, operation or something. And they said, no, no, we're just going to go take you to the um, to the clinic, you know, the, um, the where I usually get, like, uh, shots and meds, like chemo type, type of thing. And they it takes a couple of hours. And she says she's going to give me two pints of nice, fresh, oxygen-rich, iron-rich blood. And hopefully I'm going to be all excited and, you know, back to energy. Then I went to, um, and then my sister came with me. And I we talked about... Um, the pain that I was still having, which isn't that much, just in my knee. Um, and she said that after an operation, she likes to get a few sort of, um, a few radiation treatments in there. So I'm going to have to do that again um, for like my leg where, where they put the rod in. I'm having trouble with this one for some reason. I can't see where that is. So, so that's gonna be me for the next couple of weeks. I gotta get some radiation. I gotta get some uh, a blood transfusion, and then I get to go back in September for my scans. So there's that. Yay! I know. I I didn't realize how much of a process it is when you have the metastatic <laughs> I guess like you know the first time we're going through it it was like well first of all it was during COVID so that kind of messed things up I think but um I first went in I got my chemo and then I had my um then I had my surgery and then I had the radiation and I was like done ding toast is up kind of thing and um and that was it and at the end I remember saying to the woman it's like so what am I am I like in remission she goes no you are cancer free and I was like oh all right cool and then when it came back I'm like wait a second what how did that happen and apparently there's some there were some cells in my in my bloodstream and they attach themselves to my bone and la di da but you know you hear the cancer and you're like okay just give me the three treatments chemo surgery you know but they can't not with what I have because 
there's no real like like um tumors it's more of a like cells like crusty cells like a barnacle almost growing on my bones and apparently there it's inside my bones i thought it would be on the outside but apparently it's on the inside so there you go it's weird you look at the at the um scans and you're like really that could be arthritis. In fact, I keep telling the, I'm like, you know, I got arthritis. And she's like, yeah, I can see that. But, but it's more than that. So this is how they do things in the modern world. So there you go. I'm going to stay positive. Come home and what? Someone's saying, watch a Mel Brooks movie. You know what I did watch, Cheryl, was Curb Your Enthusiasm with Larry David. Um, I don't know if you guys know him from Seinfeld, but he's kind of like a curmudgeon. He, uh, the the uh, guy named George, the George character from Seinfeld, is based mostly on Larry David's. He was the one who developed that character. And, um, and so he came up with this new series after Seinfeld got over, and it's called Curb Your Enthusiasm. And he has so many guests like comedians and stuff so i saw mel brooks um in there you see people like richard wait what's his name steve richard there's so many so so many um even joan she's passed away now joan you know joan i don't know her name you know the the kind of sassy woman joan she used to do for Jimmy Carson, Jimmy, I'm real, Johnny Carson, I'm losing it all, Joan Rivers, thank you, yeah, Curb Your Enthusiasm, it's actually like kind of a grown-up Seinfeld, so if you have HBO or HBO Max, that's where it started, I guess, so um, I watched that, and man, I just keep laughing, and I keep thinking, you know, laughter is such a great medicine it really does just kind of like relieves you from so much stress that I think if you weren't a laugher before and you have you're struck with some kind of chronic disease that um, going to laughing or movies that make you laugh and um, it's really the best thing to do so I'm <laughs> I'm, uh, I think that it's a good medicine. So anyway, all right, let's finish this guy up. So tomorrow, what's on deck for tomorrow? Um, I'm either going to do a tiny little bag for small things like maybe a lip balm or a couple of little chocolate treats like if you want to you went to the lint factory and you got some chocolate treats um very small and it's great for lip balm so i think i'm either going to do that or i'm going to do my large project which for my large project as you know is this um is a box a very large very nice presentation box but this one is from SVG cuts and it does cost money but you can at least see how I put it together um, if you don't want to purchase it you don't have to obviously you don't do not have to so there's my two boxes now I have four boxes I have to find a place to put somewhere um, to put some of my holiday candy in okay all right so um, let's come up here and let's have a look at, I think I'm gonna, hmm, I think I might try to make that the box tomorrow because there's a lot to it. Um, and I want to spend some time with it. Let's go ahead and have a look at it on SVG Cuts. So it is, as I think I had mentioned to you before, it was called Christmas Cafe. It's from this Christmas Cafe. Um, and let's have a look here where it might be. 
do 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 look at the little tractor that's awful cute um here it is so it kind of gets lost in the in the translation but here it is it's part of this christmas cafe svg kit and it is this one. It's so pretty and it's very sturdy. It's perfect as a presentation box. Like if you're gonna give it to somebody, like that's their main gift, um, you know, or like, you know, somebody maybe in a nursing home or going to a holiday open house. It, it would hold between one and two dozen cookies depending on the size of your cookies. Um, and I've actually shipped in this box, although you do very much need to cover it and get it all ready for shipping. Okay, so I think we might, I'm gonna start working on this after we get off and um, hopefully I will post and so you can see how this works out. Yeah. What's wrong, Cheryl? Oh, you were? <laughs> Sherry, Cheryl, you're so funny. Uh, you are fun. Okay. All right, you guys. So, um, so that's going to do it for me for today. Wow, I wrapped up quick. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, and I hope you can come back tomorrow when we're going to work on this cute little... Uh, cookie presentation box it's really a nice box so anyway oh happy birthday gail gail's birthday's tomorrow uh you're gonna do a body scan tomorrow yeah um all right dances no soliciting don't make it weird <laughs> i love those signs i i always say hope you like dog hair that's what <laughs> because that's what happens when you come into my house. Um, too much dog hair. Anyway, so Gail, happy birthday. I saw that lovely hat you bought yourself. That's terrific. And I hope that you enjoy your day. Um, yeah, maybe somebody give you a little party to make it feel better uh, than having to go and get a scan done and everything. But all right, everybody. Love you all, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.